In early 2018, a controversial documentary was aired on the BBC, highlighting vegan activism in the UK. It was centred around my vegan prophecy tour, the actions of the SAVE movement, and allegations of threats from vegans to farmers. As a result of this documentary, there were many articles written and following this, I was asked to appear on a radio show with a TV host called Jeremy Vine. I was unaware of the viewership of this radio show at the time, but it was the largest audience I've ever reached in a single interview. I'm going to tell you how many people just listened to that interview. Seven and a half million. The aftermath of this interview sparked a media tirade with dozens of articles from every major newspaper in the UK, reaching tens of millions of people. This kicked off the start to many media opportunities to come, but this was also a very polarizing debate with questions raised about my aggression and conduct and I was heavily criticized by the vegan community for pushing people away from veganism. I never released the full interview because I was very self-conscious of this criticism, but after reflection and listening back to this with a new perspective, I feel it really wasn't as detrimental to the message as some were saying and my conduct in the interview was the driving force to this becoming a very effective way of reaching the mainstream media. So here it is my most controversial interview ever. Dairy and meat farmers have claimed that they are living in fear after receiving death threats from militant vegan activists. Vegans are people who follow diets, which are even stricter than vegetarianism. While vegetarians don't eat meat or fish, they do still consume dairy food. Vegans think eating any dairy products is wrong because most milk comes from cows. Veganism is becoming increasingly popular. At least 1% of those over 15, which is over half a million people, follow this plant-only diet. People often become vegan because they're concerned for animal welfare. Fair. While not all vegans become animal rights activists, obviously there is a small but growing proportion who directly confront those in the food industry. The BBC's Victoria Derbyshire programme spoke to farmers who've been targeted by angry vegans and the farmers have been saying that they're called murderists and rapists. They claim that they've received death threats, they've even had livestock stolen. We can listen actually to a vegan protest. You'll hear activists confronting farmers and rattling their gates. Would you like to speak no, no, all let me the speak. time because I find yeah. that a bit intimidating. Yeah, let me speak to right? all okay. oh, I do care about animals. You, yeah. you care about animals, yeah. Absolutely. but you condemn them to a slaughterhouse oh, when you eat them. How dare you oh, treat us as hold that? So protest by vegans against farmers and abattoirs. Some of them uh, hold vigils. They stand in the meat aisles of supermarkets with graphic images of animals being slaughtered and they hold protests for animal rights. Farmers have actually been meeting counter-terrorism police to discuss how to respond. So we wondered, are you a farmer? Have you been on the receiving end of vegan anger? Maybe you don't work in the meat or dairy industry, but you've got a vegan in your office. You might have asked, what is it about a vegan diet that makes them so angry? Joey Carbstrong joins us, a vegan activist from the SAVE movement, which has 42 groups in the UK, over 100 worldwide. Good afternoon. Hello, Jeremy. How are you? I don't know whether you're angry today or just generally about the whole thing. Well, I'm a bit upset to see your sandwich has a piece of a pig's body in there, a dead pig that didn't want to die. Probably uh, push, pushed into a gas chamber because that's the most humane method for stunning pigs in the UK, it, a gas it, chamber. Yes, there's a ham sandwich on the table, yeah. yeah. Ham is a euphemism. That actually come from the flesh of a, a dead pig. But What anyway. would you rather call it? I'd like you to call it the dead body of an animal who didn't want to die. Is the cheese a problem as well? The cheese comes from a, uh, the, a mother who had her children taken from her, okay, and had her hands shoved in her anus and was artificially inseminated with bull semen. Probably why vegans would say that a dairy farmer is akin to a rapist. I wouldn't call a farmer a rapist. I wouldn't use any of that words without explaining to them uh, the process and why they actually involve themselves in these types of practices. But you, for you, if I, I obviously won't eat this sandwich now. In fact, I might never eat it, but... It it's offensive to see it. Well, it's more offensive. Uh, I believe it's more offensive to actually show me the piece of an animal who didn't want to die than it is to sort of call someone out for it. Okay. So tell us what you're doing by way of campaigning. Okay. So what we do is uh, uh, most of my campaigning, all of my campaigning is peaceful. Okay. It's uh, polite dialogue in a respectful manner. I do activist workshops where I teach people this way of advocating. Okay. Now, um, farmers in these situations are claiming to be the victims, which I think is quite absurd when we think that they are forcibly breeding these animals, putting them on trucks and sending them to their murder. Now, if you don't like the word murder, they're being killed against their will. I don't know if anyone's actually been in a slaughterhouse. I've been in the slaughterhouse where they're decapitating animals. I've seen the last ounce of life be drained from their eyes and it smells like fear, blood and feces in what there. What if somebody who eats meat just doesn't want to hear this? Well, 
if it's not so good they just enough, they don't want to hear. They want yeah, to eat meat without fine. hearing it. That's willful ignorance, but you are yeah, still yeah. consuming it. It's in your body. But they're allowed to say, and I, I, I might be in this position. I don't know. I want to eat a ham sandwich. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear what it comes from. You're paying for it to happen, aren't yeah, you? I don't want to hear it comes from. You're paying for pigs to be killed, and you don't want to hear but, it. But, but that's do they have? Ignorance. Would a child have a right to say, "I don't want to hear this"? Well, we're, we're force feeding them dead animal bodies, and if a child seen a slaughterhouse, they would not want to eat that, would they? They might well not want to eat it. That's no, true. Well, but it's not but, food. It's, but, it's violence. But just but just saying, I don't want to know where it comes from, is acceptable, isn't it? Well, there's many. If you're if you're directly causing something to happen and you don't want to hear it, yeah, but you're responsible for that. A child wants to eat a sausage roll without being reminded. Well, I, I think we have a responsibility to show our children how that, that sausage roll came about. And, Can't and the let child them... choose not to hear it? <clears throat> well, that's ignorance, isn't it? But they could choose to be ignorant. They can, they can choose to be willfully so why would you stand in the aisle of a supermarket with pictures of animals being killed? What do you think is more immoral, showing people pictures of animals being killed or paying for it directly with your uh, food habits, your food choices, paying for it to happen? Supply and demand. These industries wouldn't exist without the consumer. I don't think people that consume animal bodies are bad people. I used to consume them three or four times a day, but I've just woken up Did and you, I just... So you were a meat, a meat eater yourself? Only four years ago. Okay? And four years ago? So in, in your 20s, I'm guessing? 26, 27, okay. I think I went vegan. So you, were, you ate a lot of burgers? I ate steak for dinner, chickens for lunch. Pig bodies for breakfast. And what was your what was your sense of the the vegan mindset when you weren't a vegan? I just Did you think, think they're all crazy or what? Well, the thing is, it's funny how like we are ostracised for being extremists. No, I'm asking what you thought of vegans when you weren't one. I didn't have a thought on vegans, but right. if someone come up and politely politely told me that you know I'm I'm contributing to some of the worst animal abuse on the planet with my food choices, I would probably listen to them. Did, did that happen to you at some point? Then? Someone planted a seed. They said if you eat suffering and death, it manif manifested dis disease and, and uh, anxiety in your body. And I thought of the sort of the reaction from an action, okay? Like you do bad things and bad things come back. Okay. And I thought animals are vulnerable and innocent and I didn't want to be a part of that. Right, and that was just like a light switch moment for you. It was a seed that was planted in my mind and it took a little while to flourish. And I lived with hypocrisy knowing that I cared for dolphins and dogs and cats, but I had a piece of a cow on my plate and I couldn't live with that hypocrisy for more than, you know, an extended period of time. All right, let's just bring in John here. Not his real name. You're a haulier. You transport live animals across the UK. Hi, John. Yeah, good afternoon, Jeremy. Good afternoon, Joey. You've heard the, the case there for vegans getting a bit stuck into our food supply industry. Yes, Jeremy, what it is, uh, first of all, I'd just like to emphasise the UK as in has the highest husbandry and welfare in livestock farming and transport. We do lots of certification. In my, my family alone, there's 150 years of farming and livestock haulage. Uh, we have vehicles now state-of-the-art costing in excess of 250,000, 300,000 with aircon, water drinkers, um, temperature control. Um, we're we're on the way to the abattoirs. On the yeah, way to the yeah, slaughterhouse yeah, yeah, where they get killed did, against their will. Yes. So Jerry, what, what about Jerry, the welfare Jerry, inside the slaughterhouse? That's Jerry speaking on me. Um, yeah, yeah you, I'd just like to, uh, Jerry, what I'd like to say is, also, we're incredibly big farmers. We have seven to 10,000 sheep at any one time that will go in to the food chain. So what, where's Obviously, the justification for sending them to a slaughterhouse when it's unnecessary? Sh give me a justification. Bit, uh, yeah. Justify oh, it. Justific I don't care what, if you got to Let him speak. Okay. Just, justification is, first of all, yeah. I have not to pick an argument on the side of it, UK. Obviously, you're obviously Australian and New Zealand. Perhaps you ought to worry about your own country, first of all, because did you realise all the, the lambs and ewes killed in Australia and New Zealand are all killed halal? Because obviously you have such a... So why are you worried about the UK? We have the highest standard. We have to take certificates. Just <laughs> the highest certificates. standard for killing animals. They stab them yeah, all definitely. in the throat. They no, stab yeah, every no. single animal in the throat. They shock them or they They're gash chamber them and they... Yeah, stab them in the throat. Stone. UK, yeah, Australia, stone. America, no right. better. All right. Jo um, no, but, John, but, but, have so you, like said, John, as, we, uh, in your job, have you had vegans throwing things, hitting things? I don't yes. know. We go to a regular abattoir every other Monday. They would be down in an abattoir where we've had people stand in front of the lorries. Police have actually threatened to arrest the lorry drivers because they've kept dribbling forward to drive forward because they say you have to stop. We've had, does the UK people know that these people are also aligned with the ALF? And I've had colleagues in the industry had letter bombs over the years. There's a company... Provide evidence for that step. claim that all vegans are extremists with letter bombs, no, OK? No, 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 stopping no, no, for two minutes, stopping your truck for two minutes... 
is as that as bad as condemning animals to a knife in the throat? Who's the victim they would here? Be better. To be honest, why why should anybody public please tell me? Everybody's got a right to their opinion, but these people, when we go to the dogs, we go to abattoirs. You've got people hitting the sides of lorries, screaming. John, my brother, the John, animals, John, the are you the victim yes, in this situation? You sit in the front of your truck and drop animals off to their death. Who is the real you victim here, my friend? And you know what? And Where is your justification for that? Do- we have to take certification because the, uh, the world, uh, the UK has to eat, OK? We can eat plants, my friend. I'm vegan. Four years. Completely healthy. There's no justification to do this. this well, one of the things people... that... Um, sorry, one of the things sorry. that's been said by people I know, but I, this, there may be no evidence for this, is that vegans do seem to be very angry. Yeah, you'd be and angry too if there were dogs in the well, back of that truck. Whether eat, I don't, is it possible that eating meat calms you down? Eating, if there were dogs in the back of that truck, the public would be helping us. But they are speciesists. They think some species are food and some species are to be cared for. You'd be stopping the truck too, Jeremy, if, you, if Jerry, it was your dog in the back. I'd like, to, I'd like to know half of the vegans, the, vegeta- the vegans, the ALF, when they go to do these process, uh, protests and different things, where are their pets too? Left Brother, in the house do, you have a, do you have a pet dog? You know, so, do you have so, a pet I've, dog, John? W- we have working dogs. Do you dogs have a pet dog? They work, they okay. work do you think your dogs them. have moral value? Uh, so our dogs get treated very, very, okay, very well. So do you think a bolt gun in a dog's head is okay? To be honest, we would not put on any animal... High welfare, standard any, slaughter. Uh, is that okay high, for a dog? Our, our high welfare, to be unfortunately, okay. we would, yeah. if we had a dog well, breaking... You didn't leg, answer the brother, question. We is is high welfare slaughter yeah, for a yeah, dog we would, okay? We would, we would euthanise any animal... If right, that was sick. Is under, if it was under pain or if it's outside of okay, it. Okay, what about but to eat them? Unfortunately, we're in a trade. We have no problem. As long as it's done correctly and in a proper way, it's perfect. That's different. Thank you, John, very much. Is it a good point, Joe, that if in the way people make choices about what they eat and how they consume... And sheep are bred, a lot of them, to to be consumed. Cows are. They Does that change the moral value of those they animals? They live otherwise. Yeah, but should they be grateful to be sent to a slaughterhouse and be exploited for their bodies? Is it just the manner of death that upsets you? No, it's the fact that we're exploiting them and using them at all and condemning them to death when it's unnecessary. How is this justified? We're, we're, we're a civil society. This is savagery. Thank you very much to Joey Carpstrong, vegan activist from the Save Movement, which has 42 groups in the UK, over 100 worldwide. Apologies for the ham sandwich that was left out. Pig sandwich. In the studio. And John, also Haulia, who transports live animals on the other side of the argument. Hey, my friend. Thank you. Well done. Thanks for that. You did well. God, you are that would have been... full of power. <laughs> Sorry, you. I get really passionate in those no, moments. That's all right. You could be passionate. Yeah, you know, and like I said, I don't think he's a bad person. He's just a product of a society that thinks this is okay. You know, and I used to uh, eat animals yeah, just as much. Yeah, we're all on it, probably, aren't we? But, um, yeah. No, I... Yes. Interesting how he couldn't justify it. He just started saying, I have a $250,000 truck with air conditioning, but... Yeah, the truck is very comfortable, yeah. It's not justification. Thanks, you, thanks okay. for your time. Take I really appreciate rest, that. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Hope they in. like that the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <they> <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey! If you're interested, on the back, you can. This is a case-sensitive link. You can do a little vegan challenge. Great. Okay. Have you got the phone physically to your head? Brilliant. Great. Cheers, matey. Fantastic. Thanks, Joey. No worries, thanks thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely to meet you both. Thank you. Do keep in touch. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it. Yeah, the YouTube on the channel. His YouTube channel. Yeah, Joey Carpstrong. Oh, lovely. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Really nice to meet you. Thanks for having us here. Really good to meet you as well. Thank you. That was excellent. Yeah, that's a good one. 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 Yeah, um, I'll give you a, uh, an example of when I was heavily criticised. I did an interview on the Jeremy Vine show in the UK. I was a foreigner, I didn't know who Jeremy Vine was. Apparently he has a big uh, radio show. And I was just trying my best. I wanted to do the animals justice. I wasn't on the show promoting myself, okay? I was promoting animal rights. Uh, but many people in the community, uh, the vegan community, had their own part to say about that. They said, you know, you failed the animals, you were too aggressive. And I took it pretty hard because I'd been on tour, um, trying my best. You know, we're, we're all just trying our best, aren't we? You know, There's no handbook on how to do this. Turns out though, that as a result of my conduct in that interview, I went viral on in the newspapers over there. Now I'll get criticized by people who aren't vegan, by vegans and by other activists. But luckily I'm not doing it for any of them, okay? Doing it for the animals. The animals say, oh, you know, you know, I'm on my way to be murdered inside of a gas chamber, but you know, you're a little bit aggressive in that interview when you're defending us. Of course not, of course they wouldn't. 